Hey everybody, it's Chad, and today we're going to be talking about the gear that I carried on my recent through hike of the Mid-State Trail here in Pennsylvania. I'm going to talk about what worked, what didn't, the philosophy behind why I chose the gear that I chose, as well as changes I would make for future hikes. What I won't be covering too much in detail is the specific weight of each item, as I'll include a link to my lighter pack below for you to see those yourself. But for most of the trail, my pack weight, base weight, was around 11 to 12 pounds. And towards the end of the video then, I'll show you how I pack all the gear back into my backpack. Let's get started. All right, so first for clothing worn, uh, you'll see just kind of some general um, principles here at work. First, I love merino wool. So most of my clothing, as much as I could be, was merino for lots of reasons. One, merino doesn't stink like synthetics do. Uh, they dry quickly, they breathe well. They help regulate your body temperature to keep you cool when it's warm and warm when it's cool. They have naturally high uh, UPF ratings, so uh, you're keeping a lot of the sun off of you as well. Um, and I typically like to, for sun and bug protection, I like mechanical versus chemical treatments uh, to protect myself. So wearing long, long sleeves and a high collared shirt to help block the sun instead of having to carry a lot of sunscreen and wear a lot of sunscreen. So with that, I'll start with the, uh, my shirt. So the shirt I wore most of the time was the Wool and Prince work shirt. Uh, these are being discontinued, um, but they're a fantastic shirt. I think it's around like 170, maybe to 200 GSM weight. So it's definitely a little heavier um, weighted shirt, but because I was wearing it all the time, I didn't really mind. I love button down shirts. One for the chest pockets are great, but also I can regulate my body temperature a lot more easily by unbuttoning the shirt or buttoning up as much as I need to to stay warm or stay cool. The long sleeves, like I said, were great um, to keep the sun off, but if it started getting cool, I could easily roll them down and have full you know, wrist to, to shoulder protection with that. Um, of course, it did breathe really well. It kept the sun off of me, and this is the shirt I did wear most of the time. Uh, now, I probably, you moving closer towards kind of the late spring and summer months, I would go with a lighter version, maybe one of the dress shirts instead, just for less insulation. Less insula insulation. <laughs> um, but for most of the time, it was great. And I should say the temperature range for my trip, it was during the month of April. My lowest low was like maybe around like 35, 37 degrees Fahrenheit up to about 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, this worked really well in those conditions. If it did get a little too hot, I could just wear this unbound merino tank top on its own. Uh, or if it got really cold, especially when it got cold and rainy, I could wear this tank top underneath the work shirt and be totally fine. So I never needed like an additional fleece or sweater to wear while hiking on the trail. I did use a wind jacket, but I'll get to that in a little bit. So Unbound Merino tank top was great. Uh, I didn't really wear it that much, uh, though again, towards the summer months, because I do get so hot and sweaty very easily, it's important for me to be able to wear something that allows you know, maximum skin exposure for maximum evaporative cooling effect, uh, but also just to have less insulation on me. So, Towards the summer months, I would just be wearing a tank top for the most part, unless it could be really sunny, and then I would get um, a lighter weight long sleeve merino wool uh, shirt for on top. My shorts were just a very uh, cheap synthetic, uh, like polyester pair of running shorts, generic pair of running shorts, uh, very lightweight. I did cut the, um, the liner out. Liners never seem to work for me very well. From there, I underneath that, I did wear uh, merino wool um, briefs. And I've made the, the move to briefs completely now from boxer briefs. Uh, whatever it is about boxer briefs cause more chafing for me than wearing briefs. I had little to no chafing while wearing these while hiking. Uh, I think it's the legs of the boxer briefs kind of add more kind of movement to the material, which for me would just cause a lot of, um, a lot of discomfort. The one thing I would change, uh, and especially if I ever got to make it my own, is that all the underwear seem to have like this seam here in the middle. Uh, like right underneath your your girdle <laughs> and uh, that would eventually cause some discomfort just from like the sweat uh, build up and everything so um, ideally a future pair of underwear of briefs is made where there's no seam anywhere near the front or the back of your uh, of your body so but other than that I did love these I only carried one pair of underwear for socks I only carried one pair of hiking socks and these were the darn tough quarter uh, quarter cut hiker socks which you know most of you are familiar with uh, for a hat, I wore the Wooly Company hat. Uh, it's merino wool, uh, wherever you see the black, and then the uh, kind of synthetic venting here on the sides. This was a really, really great hat to wear. It kept me warm enough when I needed it, and also breathed really well, so I didn't overheat while wearing it. I could keep it on my head most of the time. 
Underneath that, uh, or over top of this, depending on the weather, I would use my North by North merino wool handkerchief underneath, kind of like a Sahara hat style to stay cool, keep the sun off, help trap the breeze, but also help keep the bugs off of my back and neck and most of my face. Uh, that worked really well for that. If it was really cold and windy, I would use the North by North merino wool uh, kerchief. I'd tie it over my hat as a hood and then wrap around my neck. So I'd have full neck and head protection and the, um, the brim of the hat helped kind of keep it out of my uh, my peripheral vision. But this worked really well when it was kind of cold. And then if it was you know really windy, then I could put my wind jacket over top and um, uh, use it that way. Also for uh, for sleeping, I would use this as my hood or warm hat for sleeping in uh, at night because I didn't carry an additional beanie or anything like that. So typically, I like to use one as my active layer, one that got sweaty and dirty during the day, and one that I kept in my pack just to stay dry and warm, or stay dry for me for at night. Uh, but depending on the weather, it went back and forth. So I was really glad I had uh, both of these. In full disclosure, I do own North by North, so this is my company, so there is that major bias there as well. But this is it for the clothing that I actually wore while hiking. Okay, so for clothing that was packed in my pack most of the time, uh, were typically things for um, like windier or colder conditions, but I did wind up wearing everything at one point or another. So um, typically what I wore uh, over top of my shirt, if it was um, getting a little cold outside, was this Cotopaxi Paray wind jacket. Uh, in terms of breathability and wind resistance, this is definitely more towards the um, more breathable, less wind resistant material, but really like it. It's super comfortable. Uh, it has somewhat of like a four-way stretch to it. So it was really a lot of, it was a joy really to wear most of the time and weighed very little. Uh, for pants, the only pair of pants I brought were this pair of uh, Patagonia, I think maybe a Houdini uh, trail running pant. Uh, it's nice, had buttons on the side so they're easy to get on and off over my sneakers. Um, and uh, they worked really, really well. Definitely a little bit more um, wind resistance than breathability, but kind of a good balance of both and also very, very lightweight. And I did, um, you know, again, going back to my point of um, preferring mechanical over chemical uh, treatments for sun and bug protection, I did treat all of these clothes and some of my other clothes with permethrin just for the added bug protection. But because it was April and it was kind of cold, I really didn't have too many issues with uh, flying bugs and only had issues with ticks right around the Arby winter to Ravensburg State Park area. So uh, it did provide a mechanical barrier to insects if there were problems with them, but also was treated with permethrin to really help uh, to keep uh, insects off of me. So this is uh, what I'd wear typically while hiking. Again, if it was really cold, I didn't have a fleece jacket or an extra sweater to put on. If it was really cold, I could wear um, the tank top over top of the shirt with uh, wind protection on top of that and, and probably the kerchief around my head to keep me warm while hiking because I'm still generating a lot of heat. Now, when I stopped uh, for camp or for, for breaks and everything, uh, I did have my Go Light um, Bitterroot Puffy. This is kind of old school um, and this was actually a last minute add to my pack. I almost didn't bring a Puffy because I didn't think I'd really need it, but was glad I did just because my first couple nights were you know in the, in the upper 30s. So um, this was nice to have. Uh, one thing I would do differently would be to get a lighter weight puffy jacket for colder temperatures. And maybe without a hood. Um, I love this jacket except for the fact that this is a problem across the board with most um, ultralight backpacking jackets is there's absolutely no way to adjust the hood. And so you wind up losing a lot of heat or you wind up um, having the wind blow in and blow out a lot of your heat, um, which is kind of makes a hood almost pointless. So. Um, while I wish I didn't have this jacket specifically, I was glad to have a puffy jacket. Uh, this one weighed about 12 ounces, so for future hikes, I definitely want to invest into a lighter weight puffy in the 6 to 8 ounce, uh, 8 ounce range. With that, to help keep my hands warm, I did carry a pair of Possum Down gloves. These things are just unbelievably awesome. They do last about a season or two, depending on how well you treat them and if, they're, if you use trekking poles or not, I found. I don't use trekking poles, but by using trekking poles or walking stick, I mean, you're going to be rubbing that that uh, that stick against these gloves, which can help them wear out a little bit faster. But uh, definitely very very warm. And there are a couple times I had to wear them while they were wet, and they still insulated really really well. To keep my hands dry, uh, or I should say warm uh, while wet as well, with my uh, Z Packs Versus Rain Mitts. Absolutely love these things. They're super light. They did a great job of keeping my hands, um, you know, mostly dry. But if they got wet, it helped keep them. Um, warmer in the wind and in the rain. 
I was surprised at how durable they were, uh, especially since I did use a, uh, a walking stick the entire length of the trail uh, in my hand. So um, they did a good job with that. The only problem I have with these is the opening to stick your hand into is actually pretty narrow. And I don't have really huge forearms, but they definitely had a tough time getting it over my, uh, over my forearm. And then because of how small the opening was, it wanted to kind of drift down my wrist a little bit. So I would lose that kind of upper arm uh, protection as well. But other than that, I love these. They did work really well, and they also dried really quickly. Now, for uh, one more thing. So for rain protection, I'm a total poncho user uh, for a lot of reasons. One, I like the protection it, it offers to my, my core, my lower legs, and my pack all at the same time. And one of the main complaints people say is, well, ponchos blow around a lot in the wind. There's ways to tie these so they stay in your body, they stay form-fitting so they don't blow around too much. But with that, I love the added ventilation. So again, I'm a really hot hiker while I'm hiking. And so anything I can do to prevent as much perspiring as possible, I'm gonna do. So uh, this is a, an old school Equinox uh, Terrapin Poncho. It's the ultra long version. Uh, Cause I was using this as a, uh, as a shelter as well on, on previous hikes. But I very shoddily added a, a waterproof zipper to the front to help with the venting and also to help make it easier to put on. And this was really, really awesome. Uh, to do that. The venting was fantastic. Even in the rain, the brim of my hat would kind of block um, the lower part of the, or the upper part of this as well. So I could keep it unzipped, be able to vent really easily, but still prevent rain from going in too much. The only problem uh, with this thing is the weight, especially with the added zipper. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces of gear, so it's going to be hard to let go of it, but definitely investing in a, um, uh, like a Cuban fiber poncho would be a really great upgrade. I did have a Z-Pax one that didn't work out very well, didn't have really good coverage. Um, but definitely want to invest in a, in a Cuban fiber poncho that also has a zipper on the front for ventilation because I just love the way ponchos work. And it did rain a lot of the time I was on the trail, so this was nice to uh, have um, with me to help stay dry as much as possible. Now for sleeping, uh, my sleeping socks were these incredibly soft and amazingly warm possum down socks. Absolutely love these things. They're so comfortable to put on. They help keep my feet really dry at night because my feet were pretty much wet every day, all during the day from you know stream crossings to all the rain that I experienced on the trail to just the trail being saturated in general. So it was nice to be able to put these on at night in my hammock to help keep my feet warm and very dry. Love these things. Uh, for bottoms, I wore Ridge Merino uh, wool bottoms. Again, for all the great things that Merino wool offers. If it was really cold, this could fit underneath my um, uh, hiking pants really easily over top of my shorts and underwear easily. So uh, didn't have to do that very often, but it worked really well in that regard. Now for my sleeping top, I did have a long sleeve um, Merino wool Henley shirt. This is from uh, Wooly Company, Wooly Clothing Company. Um, my personal philosophy with clothing is that clothing should be able to both keep you warm and keep you uh, cool at the same time by having features like, you know, button up or button down or zip up or zip down collars. I prefer buttons just because they never fail. If they do pop off, they're easy to replace. And uh, for the Henley, I did want something that allowed this part of my chest to breathe because if I wear like a shirt, like a marine wool shirt or any kind of shirt that has a kind of like a straight collar on it, that tends to trap a lot more heat and perspiration and I tend to wake up really hot and sweaty in the middle of the night. This Henley shirt with the ability to unbutton down to about mid chest was great telling me uh, to vent and stay cool in my uh, in my quilts even when the temperature was down in the uh, low 40s upper 30s really like that and if I wanted to if it got really really cold outside I could put the tank top underneath this put this over top my um, button down shirt on top of that and then my wind shirt on top of that to really stay warm if I had to but uh, fortunately I didn't have to so this is the rest of the clothing that I had packed in my backpack all right, so for my shelter system, uh, you'll see here that I did go with a hammock setup, and typically hammock setups in general are heavier than, say, some tent setups, uh, but also like uh, especially tarp and divvy setups. So I, this is the one system I was really trying to cut the most weight from, and while I found some success with some things, I definitely ran into some issues, so lots of improvements to be made here. Um, but let me go through what worked first. So first was my uh, hammock gear, 11 foot standard hex tarp. It worked really well um, when I needed to the most. 
The only issue with the tarp was the fact that it is so um, so light. They make it so light by making it uh, shorter on the side. So if you don't set up carefully, like if you don't set up your hammock in like a secluded area, you will have a lot of wind uh, blowing through. And that was the only issue I had was wind kind of coming underneath the tarp and um, robbing it from my, my underquilt. So uh, keeping that in mind, I would still use this tarp uh, on almost every trip just because I know I seem to be more careful with uh, site selection. But uh, Dyneema is very, very lightweight. Uh, it does have Dutchware uh, tarp worms and the uh, Ridgeline uh, beaner on it as well with the Spectra cord for all the guy outs. Um, worked really well. I learned that you really need to tie out the tarp as far as you can first and then kind of back your way in from there just to get the added protection. Now, I will say this thing held up to uh, basically tornado uh, weather. I did have one night in uh, Poe Patty State Park where uh, tornadoes literally came through close by the area. Uh, fortunately, it didn't touch down near where I was, but uh, I woke up in the middle of the night, everything was blowing around shaking. This thing still held up extremely well. Uh, fortunately, I was able to make it under a picnic pavilion to ride out the storm, but uh, it kept, kept me dry uh, and all the rain that I had on the trail and worked very well. I did add a, um, a Dutchware snakeskin over top of it. That made putting it away and um, opening it very, very easy and much easier to pack. But especially in really windy conditions when you're trying to set it up, um, you know, it's nice to be able to un un uh, uncover a little bit of your tarp, pull the, the guy lines out, stake them, and then continue on down the tarp. Otherwise, your tarp's blown on the wind and the, uh, the lines are getting tangled. So highly recommend uh, the tarp uh, and the, uh, the snake skins and the Dutchware hardware on that. If you do want more protection, especially wind protection, then definitely go with a larger tarp from Hammock Gear. Uh, but I was really happy with how light uh, the tarp aspect of my sleep system was. For stakes, I just used um, six of the Vargo uh, Ultralight Shepherd Hook stakes. You know, a lot of people um, you know, say that stakes like this don't work in like high winds in uh, treacherous terrain. Like I said, I went through tornado weather with these and they held up just fine. Uh, I did put uh, rocks on the ends of these sometimes but I felt the ground wasn't maybe holding in well enough, uh, holding them well enough. Um, but with that, you know, it, it stayed staked down all the time. Now what's really great about these thinner uh, shepherd's hooks is they work really well in this Pennsylvania ground where, you know, it's like a light layer of duff above, you know, lots of rocks and roots. And this kind of snuck, it, snaked its way around all of those and stayed in the ground really, really well. So I was very, very happy with these. And I keep these in my uh, Yama Mountain stake bag that my buddy Gen gave me. Uh, and I also keep my uh, Vargo um, Titanium uh, Dig Dig tool in there as well. This is great for, this is really the best tool to use, especially in this state, for digging cat holes because these serrated edges did a great job just um, cutting through all the roots and everything and, and digging a proper um, uh, cat hole. But I also use this as a tent stake, so if there's one side that the tarp is a lot windier, there's a middle guy out on the tarp, I would attach this to it on that side for that added, um, added strength to keep my tarp from blowing away. Worked really, really well. Okay, so now for the things that didn't work very, very well. Um, I did go with the uh, button sling or bias weight weenie uh, hammock. This is their, their standard um, hammock. I'm, I am about 190, 200 pounds, uh, give or take, so I couldn't go with their weight weenie micro. But it is a full-size hammock. It's an 11-foot um, uh, length, and it does come with the um, uh, the ridge line on it already, the, the non-adjustable ridge line. I used this thing the entire trip. I did not like it um, in terms of hammocks. Uh, the material just didn't stretch very well, and no matter what I did and how I hung it, I was always getting calf ridge, and the material seemed to like push up against my um, my feet and my body and. I just had a really tough time getting a you know, really good diagonal lay in it and um, you know, it just wasn't that, that comfortable. It actually, I didn't sleep very well a lot of nights because of how uh, this hammock you know, just didn't move my body very well. And again, I tried in a lot of different positions, a lot of different hangs, hang angles, and no matter what I did, I still got a horrible calf ridge and had a tough time sleeping. But um, it is you know, probably the lightest full weight or full length uh, hammock you find out there. Um, he mentioned on his website about seven and a half to eight ounces. When I got mine, mine was about nine, nine and a half ounces. So it was about an ounce, ounce and a half over spec. So that was also another thing against it. So probably won't be using this hammock anymore. Um, and may move towards just using a heavier, uh, hammock 
that's just more comfortable. Now for, for bug protection, I did start out with the uh, Button to Sling Bugginator um, bug net. I didn't like this because it's a bottom entry uh, bug net. It has to be over your ridge line and over your hammock you know, before you set it up. And so if you just want to kick the, the bug screen off or it's kind of like lounging in your hammock, you really can't because the bug screen is basically on there. And the, um, the space between the bottom of the bug net and the bottom of my hammock was so little that it actually like would crunch up my, uh, my bottom insulation. So I was getting, I was feeling cold spots from this in the middle of the night. And then it didn't offer any other protection except for bug protection. It is very lightweight and the two pair well together, but just for me, it didn't work out very well. So halfway through the hike, I did, I dropped this and, and used my um, Dutchware uh, Summer Sock. It is a little heavier, but it has kind of wind protection underneath. Um, but the problem was this is only a 10 foot ridge line. I had this for a smaller hammock of mine. So it didn't work very well with my 11 foot hammock. Um, and I had the same problem where uh, the distance between um, my insulation and the bottom of this got really close. So it was compressing a lot of my bottom insulation so it didn't work very well. So in general, I'm done with this. Uh, I'm gonna move, you know, either go back to my Dutchware Chameleon, which I love, the love the material, love how well I sleep in it with the integrated bug net or find some other lightweight option that works. But this is, I went with this because I was trying to cut as much weight as possible. Now with that, for hanging, um, I use these newer uh, inch and a half uh, spider web um, straps from Dutchware. Uh, they're incredibly thin and incredibly light. It's like an ounce for both of these together. Um, and I just tie this on with a Beckett hitch to my hammock and then it has a loop on the other end for uh, uh, going around the tree. It, the first couple nights, it's a little sketchy because you're, you can't believe this little material is going to hold you up. But it did work really well for that. And tying the Beckett hitch, it's a really fun hitch to learn. And it's kind of cool that you have a lot less hardware involved. But the problem I had with this was, was twofold. One, no matter how many times around the tree I would wrap this, it still marked the tree in some way or another. It was just too much weight on too little material around the tree that it you know, left marks in the bark. So... For that, I knew I had to quit using it because um, I didn't want to damage any of the trees I was hanging from for leaving no trace reasons. Uh, I, I wrapped it around like three times at least one night and it still was causing the indentation, severe indentations into the tree. The second problem is once the stuff gets wet, it slides. Uh, so my first night, it was raining, it was cold, hung my hammock and got in and the one side just dropped all the way down. And it took me a while to figure out that it was just slippery because it was wet. And, but it's easy to solve once you just tie an extra half inch hitch into your Beckett hitch. It, wouldn't, it won't do that anymore. But, uh, so I gave these up halfway through even though they are so incredibly light. And I went back to my normal um, spider poly webbing from Dutchware. Uh, also about an inch and a half, but just a much thicker material. And uh, worked really well, it didn't damage the trees. And that has the integrated um, Dutch clip on it, but also the, um, the beetle buckles for uh, quickly adjusting um, the hammock, which is also nice. At the end of the day, you don't want to be, you know, playing around with your uh, your straps too much, trying to tie the back of the hitch in the correct position. This I guess hang on my hang my hammock from it and uh, tighten it up to where I needed it to be. So, uh, with that, like I said, I'll be making some changes definitely to my shelter system, um, especially with the hammock itself and the suspension. But um, you know, it did work for the whole trip, and it was really nice to have a hammock, especially in all the rocky, non-flat ground there is around the trail. Um, and I don't see myself going back to a tent anytime soon. All right, so my sleep system is very simple, if not colorful. Um, I will mention these are two uh, prototypes that were made for me by the new Jacks at Jacks Are Better, Don and Dave. Uh, so thanks Don and Dave for, uh, for this. It was awesome to use these products. Um, they are prototypes, but you can uh, reach out to them and, uh, and get these quilts if you want as well. Uh, they're also open to uh, custom uh, order quilts if you want to too if you want to change a couple of things about the quilt they're more than happy to work with you um, to do that but so the first one here is the um, three-quarter length this is actually the Greylock 3 but it's the FUL version um, so much lighter than their current Greylock 3 uh, three-quarter length which for me being only 5'8 worked really really well um, I basically get from my shoulders down to uh, my calves for the most part uh, under this quilt so Definitely helps save a lot of weight. It is 900 filled down, that's waterproof down. Um, really love, really loved how well this worked. And under my feet, inside my top quilt, I would put this uh, simple, you know, cheap blue foam pad under my feet to keep my uh, keep my feet warm. And then also use this as my sit pad during the day or to uh, 
you know, fan of fire and that kind of thing. Very useful to have one of these in your kit. And for my top quilt, this was uh, just their uh, 30 degree, uh, they're both 30 degree uh, FUL uh, quilt. Um, they were gonna call this the hanging Chad setup, but I kind of uh, vetoed that. Um, Cause I didn't want my nickname to be hanging Chad. But uh, worked really, really well and Jacks of it are just known for having really conservative temperature ratings on their products, and they do stuff really, really well. Uh, they're very, very lightweight. So the difference between this and the, their current lineup is they're using a much lighter weight material uh, that is uh, DWR treated. So the underquilt blocked a lot of wind and rain really, really well, and then uh, the top quilt did as well. Had a sewn foot box, and the square foot box is actually really, really nice to have my um, my butt pad fit in there nicely. Um, to, uh, to keep my feet warm, so I uh, really like that uh, that square foot box for that reason. Uh, together, uh, definitely you know, well under two pounds for both uh, for both quilts. You know, if I was moving forward, what would I change differently? Probably not very much at all. Uh, I love how well these work. Uh, in warmer temperatures, I might opt for like a lighter um, for for a higher temperature rating uh, under quilt, but couldn't be happy with this setup right here. Um, and can actually use the top quilt for uh, for ground sleeping as well, which I'm looking forward to doing on some other trips where I don't take a hammock on. So very happy with my uh, my sleep system. Now I should also add a disclaimer that uh, even though these are given to me by um, Don and Dave at Jacks Are Better, they did so without expecting any sort of review in return uh, or really anything in return. That's just how awesome these guys are. Uh, I, I'm really good friends with them, so there is that to take into account as well. But um, regardless of those things, um, you know I. And being awesome, I say this is. I was really happy with this uh, the sleep system and how warm uh, it kept me during my during my trip this past uh, past April. For my pack system, uh, you'll probably see here the most kind of unusual piece of gear uh, out of my whole setup. I went with the uh, Vargo Titanium uh, Bog Backpack, and uh, it uses the same. Or I should say Exotie Bog. It uses the same titanium frame as all of their um, other Exotie backpacks. Though uh, what this one has is kind of this external cradle that a, uh, a dry bag full of your gear then fits into into right in here. Uh, I love how versatile this pack is, and I'm going to show you uh, basically how I uh, towards the end of the video I'll show you how I pack it all, uh, so you can see how I uh, have everything carried in here. Now the pack itself um, weighed a little bit over two pounds. I included the uh, the extra bag that I had inside of it, but I couldn't have been happier. And I'll have to do a different video on why the uh, internal versus external frame debate is completely pointless when, when we're talking about comfort and when we are talking about comfort why having a rigid uh, sturdy frame whether it's internal or external really is what leads to uh, ultimately to pack comfort now additionally what uh, this pack has is an integrated lumbar support pad here which just fits in the lower half of your in, right in your lumbar region of your back so there were times where literally all the way my backpack was just in this spot here and barely even on my shoulders. So it was extremely, extremely comfortable to carry, which is why when Vargo first came out with their first titanium frame backpack, I sold and got rid of all my other backpacks because they couldn't compete in terms of comfort for what this pack has. Even though it is a little bit of a weight penalty carrying something that's a little bit over uh, two pounds, but for the, the non super gram uh, weenies out there, you know, do take a look at the Vargo Exotie frame uh, series, I should say, uh, because they really are phenomenal backpacks uh, for a lot of reasons, but mainly because it's how comfortable they are. Now, full disclosure, I did used to work for Vargo for several, several years, so uh, I did help in the design of some of these packs as well as the, uh, the sales and marketing of them, the selling and marketing of them, so uh, there is that bias there, but again, like I said, when they first came out, I got rid of all my other packs just because they could not compete with the comfort of this system. And um, I did add a, uh, a Justin's UL shoulder pouch to this. This is where I kept my cell phone, which I'm recording from right now, uh, in a lock sack to help keep it dry. And it has this nice additional front pocket that I kept uh, my wallet in, um, my little tick tweezers, and my, uh, my lip balm. So this is really nice to have on the front here. And then all my other gear uh, was stored on the outside. Uh, anything that could get wet that I didn't need to really keep dry, like my rain gear and water balls and everything, stayed on the outside in these exterior pockets. But everything I wanted to keep dry, uh, I kept, uh, first of all, I kept in this Gossamer Gear um, plastic bag. I forget exactly what they're called, pack liner maybe, three core length pack liner. Worked really, really well. Um, kept everything super dry. And it was nice to have a kind of a backup 
uh, dry bag uh, to keep all my gear uh, really dry. Now for the main bag, it then fits into the cradle of the Exotai Bog. Uh, I did switch out the, the bag, the dry bag that the Bog comes with. It's a heavy duty nylon. It works really well, um, but it weighed about seven ounces, um, five to seven ounces. So I went with the uh, Z-Pax um, Cuban Fiber Pack Liner. Uh, it's a 40, 45 liter pack liner. It fits in here perfectly. And uh, again, it was another redundant way to keep all of my gear dry. So it was nice when it was you know, pouring outside, I could quickly toss all my gear in here. Not where it really carried too much of it was in this plastic bag to help keep it dry, but um, worked really well. And it really is kind of a, a steel. Uh, like I know their bear bag, uh, which is maybe like in the 20, I don't know, 20 liter capacity size. Their bear bag system is like 50 bucks. This is only 45 for basically a 45 liter uh, dry bag. Uh, I liked it a lot um, and it worked in the pack really, really well, like I said. Uh, the only thing I didn't like was the Velcro. Uh, it was kind of hit or miss just because I wore a lot of merino wool. My clothing was always getting caught on the, um, the male side of the Velcro. But other than that, I have no complaints. Uh, really happy with it. Now, for the one night I did hang a bear bag, I did use this as a bear bag. And additionally, what's nice is if you know, you're using a ground system, this can be, you can supplement maybe like your rain skirt or whatever uh, to go under you while you're sleeping. Um, you can use it to hold water. If I can want to take like a spit bath, I can fill some with water and uh, use it that way uh, as a bear bag, you know, as a pillow or as a mattress. There's a lot of things you can use this dry bag for, which is one of the reasons why I love, particularly this, this pack system so much just because it is so versatile and there's so many things you can do with, uh, with all the components of it to help make that, you know, 35 ounces, you know, really worth its weight in gold that you're carrying. For my food and water systems, um, I definitely carried probably a little bit more than what the average uh, ultralight backpacker carries with them, but I absolutely love my setup and uh, use it every trip I go on. So, starts off first with my Vargo Titanium Bot. I absolutely love this thing. It's probably my top three favorite pieces of gear. I've been using this one for probably about seven years now, and it is a dual water bottle and cooking pot. So I would fill this up with water during the day and you know, have the outside of my backpack and I drink from it. Uh, and then when I came to cooking, all you do is put the lid over and uh, you can boil water and cook your meal right inside of there. It's just the right capacity for me in terms of you know, cooking in and also from drinking water. I just really enjoy using this a lot. Uh, for filtration, I use a Sawyer Squeeze, uh, which a lot of you use. I did add the uh, Smart Water Bottle uh, Spore Cap to it. Just makes uh, using it so much easier. Uh, the one thing I, I found that didn't work for me that a lot of people talk about is when I did have to back flush it, um, you know, I tried back flushing it through there and it didn't seem to work very well. So, uh, but no other change I would make there. I love that the cap stays on there um, just because like this, the one that sort of comes with, it's easy to lose that cap, it falls off all the time. And then once you get the cap off, you gotta pull really hard on the mouthpiece to get, to get the flow going. So definitely recommend adding the smart water bottle spore cap to um, your Sawyer squeeze. For filtering um, and also for extra water capacity, I did use the Kanak uh, two liter um, water bag. And uh, this is one of the early models. I was a Kickstarter backer for it. Um, I've had no problems with it. It did develop a small hole from some, for, from some briars. But other than that, it worked really, really well. I love how easy it is to fill water from the back end of it. Um, and I did add a, um, a Night Eyes, uh, I forget what you call this thing, like twist tie to it. And this makes this thing so much more um, extremely usable. One, when I am carrying extra water, I can just tie this to the top of my pack to keep the, uh, keep the load above, high and above um, my center of gravity for better carrying. Uh, it makes filtering so much faster than, than using the Sawyer bag. Uh, my flow rate with this Kanak is probably twice that of uh, what it was for using a Sawyer bag. But with this, uh, this extra twist tie on top, I could then turn uh, my system into like a gravity uh, filter system. So if I didn't want to, you know, sit there and, and squeeze all the water out myself, I could just hang this from a branch and have it drip into my bot easily. But also turn this into a hand washing station. So. I don't carry hand sanitizer with me. I wash my hands with soap and water. And so uh, after I'm done going to the bathroom or you know whatever, I can hang this up, uh, open up the cap of the, of the, um, the Sawyer Squeeze and allow it to drain out. It's got a nice you know, low flow rate, but it's basically like having running water in the background, in the, in the back country whenever you need it. So it uh, just makes it so much more versatile. And then when I'm done with it, done using it, it makes wrapping it up 
and keeping it all together that much easier. So highly, highly recommend that. So then for the actual cooking, I have my Bot Cozy, which um, just makes using the Bot so much easier, especially if you have, you know, turn this into coffee mugs, so you're not burning your hands, eating out of as well, or drinking out of. Um, and then for um, you know, letting your food soak and stay hot at the same time, which is really great for that. This is a nice little addition, additional thing to have. Uh, really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed using it. Um, now this is a prototype one, so uh, if anyone asks like where can I get the gray bot cozy, you can't because this is uh, only one of two that we made years ago back when I worked for Vardo. But I would keep all my uh, my kitchen gear inside of this, inside of my uh, my op sack. So the bot cozy, and for the stove, I used the um, Zelf Stoves Fancy Feast. Absolutely love this thing. It was great to be able to use just you know a quarter of an ounce of alcohol at a time if I needed to, up to you know two and a half ounces if I really really wanted to. The simmer ring was great to put over top just to kind of cut the heat back a little bit, especially for when I was uh, making things like quesadillas on the trail and want the tortillas to burn too quickly. But absolutely love this this stove. The only problem with it is um, there's no way to make this thing stable. So I did spill my dinner uh, once or twice just because it would spill over. Um, from being too top heavy so there's no way to anchor it into the ground um, and I kept it all wrapped up in this little pack towel which I used one just to mainly keep it all kind of quiet protect the stove a little bit but also I used it as my um, kind of like my kitchen wash rag and um, hand drying rag and, and prep rag so um, worked out really really well very very light uh, I used a titanium foil windscreen uh, I forget who makes this one in particular I think I got one of those Karen boxes uh, but it unfolds is really, really large. So when I did um, like want to make quesadillas, I carry like a pie pan with me to cook in, and this is large enough to kind of fit around it mostly to help block the, the fragile frame of the alcohol stove. Uh, but it's also very, very lightweight. Um, you do need to add a uh, like a paper clip to it to um, to get it kind of stay in place and to hold its shape. But it's also very, very lightweight. It's easy to blow away in the wind, so you got to keep an eye on things as well. Uh, I thought I used this, but I didn't. These are the pot lifters that Vargo makes. Worked really well with the bot. I thought I used it, but I didn't, so don't include those. The Vargo Titanium Long Handle Spoon worked really well eating out of the bot. Also, the flat um, the flat bottom was really good for kind of scraping up the last little bits of food, but also to scrape the edges of the bot to help clean it. Uh, and if you flip it over, you can actually use it as a sluice to get water into your water bottle or water bag. Even like a really small trickle of the streams kind of puts under the, the drips and have this go into your water bottle and it does uh, fill it up really, really well. So very handy item there. And then for an alcohol fuel bottle, I just use a generic um, dual neck uh, water bottle or uh, fuel bottle. I like the locks. It does have the measurements up top here. It was able to measure out my alcohol you know, down to the quarter of an ounce and uh, never ran out of alcohol at any point on the trail. And I kept my cook kit, my trash, and my food all in a uh, 12 by 20 um, ox sack, lock, lock sack, and... Uh, did work really well. I just put my food in here, and most nights I just kept it under my hammock and was never bothered by any, you know, bugs or uh, animals or anything. The only problem is a lot of people know is that this this upper part tends to rip pretty easily, and unfortunately, once this does, it makes this thing almost incredibly hard, impossible to use because it's just so hard to kind of pry the uh, pry the uh, the locks apart. So um, this one lasted, like I said, about you know my whole trip. Um, but wish this is a little bit more durable, but we'll continue to keep using these in the future. And if I didn't need bear hang, I would put all my stuff in here, put it inside the outer dry bag of my uh, backpack, and I'd hang that up in the tree as a bear bag. So that's my cook kit. The only other thing I would change uh, in terms of water is for those areas where um, water was a little sketchy, uh, not in terms of like viral issues, but you know, like farm runoff, chemicals being in the water, uh, you do hike by a couple, a couple like old mines on Mid State Trail, and there was like some acid runoff. Um, using something like like Purinize is really nice because um, it helps take all that stuff out of your water. It actually binds to all the bacteria and viruses and fungus and chemicals and that sort of thing in the water. It traps them, it, it locks onto them, and then when you filter it through your soil filter, it prevents all the stuff from getting into your water. So I wish I had carried this, I didn't. And actually got a mouthful of acid um, mine runoff uh, one day toward the end of the trail and it was awful for one thing but two um, I think I, I, I did get viral tonsillitis a couple days later after that so I'm pretty sure it had something to do with that but using something like Purinize would have helped 
that take care of the issue for me and help take care of any potential other hazards besides bacteria in the water. So uh, would consider carrying something like Purinize in the future and something you might look into as well. Okay, and lastly, for all the fun little things, uh, which I call basically my essentials uh, for the trail. Um, and these typically are consistent, you know, whether I'm hiking in the wintertime, the summertime, and in or out of Pennsylvania. So first we'll start with hygiene. So I do like to stay as clean as possible. And I found that the thing that works really well for me is this Lumatech uh, washcloth. It dries super fast. They say it um, has like kind of antibacterial properties to it because it does dry so fast, it stays cleaner. Um, it's got, you know, it exfoliates. It's really good for kind of getting all that crud off your body at the end of the day. And then it dries really, really fast. So I would use it to, I'd take a, if I couldn't uh, take a swim, I would take like a bot bath. So, you know, fill my bot with water and use this to kind of pour the water onto it and then, you know, wash my face, my hair, my body. Um, was really, really happy with that and how well it worked. And then hang it from my ridge line at night and it'd be dry in the morning. I am a soap user, dedicated soap user, and this is the, uh, I go with the unscented Dr. Bronner's just because I want to track animals as, as less as possible. Uh, I fill this up halfway and now it's still more than enough I need for the entire, the entire trip. Uh, bamboo toothbrush, lightweight, cut the handle off because you have to. Uh, it's nice because it was really, really long. A little thing of toothpaste, lip balm. Uh, I did use a little pack towel. I like having a dedicated towel just because it's nice to kind of keep uh, things dry, like your clothes you want to keep dry. Um, like I could have used my kerchief, my handkerchief to towel off, but I'd rather keep them dry if I could have and keep the dirt off. So these work really well. And when they're dry, they, they do work as a fire starter. Um, so I was really, really happy with that. And they're also very, very light. Uh, I am a bidet user. So it took me a while to, to find a bidet like this, but um, you know, it's a cheap water bottle, uh, but the, the, the wand does come out and um, you lock into place and you use it that way. Um, this has got some crud on it. Um, but then when you're done, you can kind of pop back in there, pop it in there, and I kept it on the outside of my backpack. Um, the thing about using a bidet is, uh, even though I did have to use uh, you know, some uh, paper towels to kind of dry off at the end of the day, or at the end of, uh, my poop. Um, this did, you know, uh, help keep my butt a lot cleaner, but also help cut down a lot of chafing issues. So I can kind of like just generally spray all over the place back there and help wash out a lot of the salt buildup back there. Um, but no, I also wound up using a lot less um, paper towels to kind of dry off with. So I would, these are these um, select the size paper towels. I would, you know, cut those in half and use like one half a day. So it cut down the number of paper towels I had to carry um, and kept me cleaner and, and chafe uh, free. But it is a lot to carry, and then you do have to make sure you have water in there if you do want to um, to use it. So I may go back and forth and just kind of stick with using wet paper towels in the future. Um, but I did carry a bidet, and I did like it very much on the trail. Um, some loss in bear cord. Um, I only hung a bear bag one night, um, so this is kind of uh, pointless for the most part. I did sleep with my food and was happy with that. Even in the heart of bear country, I was totally fine with that. So. Um, I did carry it, but probably won't be carrying it on future um, trips around here. In terms of like my Diddy kit, uh, I kept everything in small Cuban fiber bag. My buddy Greg, who is cool, made for me. Thanks, Greg. Um, a little fire starting kit that has uh, just a little half used um, fire steel in there and a little striker. But then I, um, for a fire starter, I take about 10 feet of jute twine. I soak it in paraffin. It works really well. I can strike it with the um, uh, the cord in there and strike it and light it, and it works like a match. Um, I did have a fire one night in my whole trip, uh, and this worked really well to get that fire going. Uh, very easy to use, happy with that. So there are lighter options out there, um, which I may try and do on future trips. Uh, for my repair kit, I had um, just some Cuban tape and some tenacious tape in there for um, fixing clothing and shelter. And then for here, I do sew to repair gear. So some of my gear, I've hand sewn the repairs into, so I do like sewing. So a little sewing kit in there, some paper clips, um, mainly for use as wire, extra O-rings for my Sawyer, for my bot, a rubber band, safety pins, uh, an extra bottle cap for um, for the Canuck Vecto, and an extra button in case one of the buttons pop off my shirt. Um, this weighed about an ounce or under an ounce. For first aid, you know, kind of a lot of the same things that most people see, you know, the, the pills, the some roll gauze, um, some KT tape, which I, I typically use the KT tape for bandages, 
um, and then a little roll of Luca tape from Lightsmith. These little rolls are awesome and they're priced really, really well, I think. Uh, but probably the best thing in my first aid kit is um, a little container of uh, medical cream. Uh, it's not really, it's not really medical cream. Um, both Sierra Sage and Green Goo both make this like all-purpose healing salve, and this stuff works so incredibly well uh, for injuries, you know, for like cuts and scrapes, for chafing, for bug bites, uh, for for pretty much anything. Um, it takes care of the pain and helps uh, speed healing incredibly fast. So I've had wounds that you know typically take you know maybe four days to heal. They're healing completely in one to two days using this stuff. Uh, I did use it for chafing, and I did use it for uh, for hot spots to kind of help with um, cut down any potential blisters. Uh, just really, really incredible stuff. Highly recommend it. If you do use it for kind of gross things, I would recommend you know cutting off a small stick and using that to dip into, and then putting it on your finger to put on like a gross area, maybe like if you have to grease your O-ring or something like that. Um, because you can use this stuff for uh, for lip balm too, which I've, I've used on occasion. So you definitely want to keep like parts of it clean uh, for that kind of use. The other thing I use, I carry with me, um, maybe a little bigger than what most people are used to, but this is the uh, the D ticker two, and for removing ticks, this is the best tool I've ever seen uh, used. So it's basically like one of those like little pickle forks, and you grasp the head of the tick in here, and once it's around, all you do is twist, and the tick can't hold on. So by second or third twist, it's already pulled right out, not parts and all. And I pull off plenty of ticks from my dog and from me using this. And since because I know I was going to be hiking by myself, I want to make sure I had something that I could use that, uh, you know, say I was bit in the back of the leg or my butt or something, I could, you know, use a mirror and then kind of see the tick and be able to take care of myself uh, when no one else was around. So I was really glad I carried this with me, though, again, I only saw ticks for, you know, a couple hours one day in the entire trip. I do carry a mirror basically for, uh, uh, for doing tick checks at night because I was by myself most of the time, but also you know, for vanity purposes. Uh, I guess I could, you know, signal somebody for survival situations, but, you know, mostly wood like this, you're not going to get a whole lot of uh, visibility from it. So, mainly for vanity reasons and for doing a tick check at night, it was really nice to have this. For lighting, I use this little Meritac uh, AAA flashlight. I love this thing. It is titanium, um, so one of a rust and it's very lightweight. It has three modes, um, low, medium, and high. All I needed... For use on the trail was this uh, even for navigating i forget the the total um brightness on the highest level but you can navigate at night with it and with the clip i just clip it to my my hat and had hands-free lighting it does come with a little um kind of light diffuser for the end and this i could uh, actually clip this up to my my ridge on my hammock and have it hang like a lamp and it worked really really well um you know very little weight for this so it's nice to kind of have in there as well and then for batteries i use these little sorbo AAA batteries that they're actually rechargeable so if you can see right there there's a little um, little plug to plug in a small a mini USB cable so I would charge these with my battery pack as well so nice to have these um, on hand I really only had to change the battery once in the entire trip now for electronics this is the biggest shock I had to my gear list because I typically don't carry any electronics with me when I go backpacking you know, I've been backpacking for over 20 years and have just now started to recently carry um, a phone with me and electronics so it was kind of shocked when I added a whole extra pound to my my, uh, my base weight but I just use a little 440 uh, 440 uh, 4, 4400 milliamp uh, lithium power practical battery pack this worked well enough the only downside it did take forever to charge but I was typically staying somewhere overnight and I could do that then um, but it was all the battery power I needed to keep my phone charged and um, charge my batteries on my flashlight the one thing I did learn is I originally started out with a short uh, cable and then moved to like a longer six foot cable because I wanted to be able to keep my battery pack in my backpack and keep my phone charged. But I found the longer the, the battery cable, the less efficiently the thing worked and sometimes didn't work at all. So there were times when this wouldn't charge my phone just because the cable was too long and it was losing voltage along the length of the cable. So definitely um, going back to using a short uh, cable for my battery pack. And then of course the um, charger, I could go lighter with this as well. This is an extra one I had from my phone. And for the phone I was using, I am using a Motorola Nexus 6. It takes great pictures, takes pretty good video. I had it in a, this protective case, and then also had that inside of a lock sack uh, to help keep it dry. Um, the lock sack, as a lot of you know, failed uh, towards the end of my trip, so I don't have it here because I wound up you know, recycling it. 
because the um, the upper part broke. So, uh, and then a small wallet, and then for a knife, I know this is overkill for most of you. This is the um, Swiss Army knife Evo Grip 18, I think. Has a nice large locking blade on it, which was perfect for cutting food for food prep. I also like to whittle a little bit, uh, so enjoyed that. Um, it does have a wood saw on it, which is nice to kind of cut some you know, branches down your way, you do some trail maintenance uh, while you're on the trail. Has a nice big pair of scissors and a um, bottle opener and can opener. And while I didn't use these very much, um, can openers for me are nice to have because I love like baked beans in the can. And so when I go to do like a resupply at a gas station, I can buy a can of baked beans there, eat it there, open it and eat it there. Uh, so I do like having a can opener. Uh, my whistle is attached to here. But the thing I like the most about it is uh, Tortoise Gear is a newer company. They make these small little ferro rods for Swiss Army knives. So they have them for the large knives and you also have them for the small, uh, like Swiss Army Classics. I would, to and they're made to replace the toothpick on your, uh, on your knife. So I highly recommend looking into Tortoise Gear. These are the Fireflies. And this is why I used to let my stove and um, every, every day, multiple times a day. Very lightweight, just a couple grams. It you know, works really, really well, and couldn't recommend it uh, enough. And I'm, I'm even feeling ballsy enough to just uh, take this on future hikes and not have my uh, my full on ferro rod with me. Um, but I might go with a smaller Swiss Army Classic, and maybe carry a larger knife with a bigger blade for food prep if I want to, because I do like to cook. But overall, very happy with this knife um, and how well it worked for me on the trail. So that's it for all the essentials. Looking around to see if I have anything, anything else, but I think that's it. Again, I'll load up everything into a lighter pack for you guys to see the specific weights of everything. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, leave a comment below in the video description or in the uh, in the comments, and I'll be sure to answer those questions for you. But this is basically everything I carried on my recent through hike, and again, about 11, 12 pound base weight. So let me know if you have any questions. Give the video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you want more. I'm going to do more videos down the line here, uh, just based on all the experience I've had backpacking over the past 20 years. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm sorry this video is so long, but hopefully you learned something new. We'll see you next time. Stay happy.